you like that song, Mitchell? Yeah. Who is that? You don't know who she is? Or no, I am not singing. I am not singing. Yeah, it's not going to happen. As we look to today and we think about God's will for our life and the direction that we're going and where we want to go, and when I think about the idea of this year and the idea that we're going to stand, you know, when the troubles of life come, it's tough to stand. It's tough to keep going forward. It's tough to continue having faith when you can't see the outcome is going to work out good. It, it's tough to keep going through the everyday burden of life. But I found this from a few months ago that I'd written, and, and I just want to reiterate that, that as we stand, we all face giants in our lives. You don't have to face your giant alone. God's grace is poured out in your despair. Find your strength and resolve in the Lord. In this, how I live out my everyday life is a constant smattering of circumstances that hit. And in that, to make sure that my resolve is not in my strength, not in my discipline, not in my devotion. It's, it's not me. It's found in God and, and his strength. And, and we understand that as we stand uh, over these last few months or the last few weeks, I haven't shown this verse, uh, but it is our verse for this year that, that I pray that you continue to memorize, that you continue to post and, and on your mirror, that you put it on your uh, vehicle, that you wrap it around you over this year, that, that you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. You know, over these next few weeks, I want us to think about standing on the power of his name. We sing the songs this morning that I, I think are so appropriate uh, for that. And, and I think about songs as I've been working more and more on the names uh, of Jesus that we go and, and we think about and how that works in our life. And I think about the songs when, when we start thinking about his name. That name of Jesus is important. The scripture tells us in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? I know we're General Baptists and we're supposed to sit back idly, but is there? Yeah. Huh? Any comfort from his love? According to what the circumstance is, is whether or not I feel his love. Any fellowship together in the spirit. And then he asked the question, are your hearts tender and compassionate? See, when we think about the name of Jesus, it changes who we are. It changes how we speak. It changes how we treat one another. It, it changes everything about us. It can change the direction of our life. Paul goes on in verse 2 and says, Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. <laughs> yeah, brothers and sisters do that all the time, right? It's kind of a tough hill to climb, but when we start realizing in whom name, in whose name we're, we're placing our trust and our faith in, that it changes how we see other people. It changes everything about us. It moves us in a way. The Bible goes on and says, don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. 
though he was God. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, leaving eternity to be placed in constriction as a, of a human body, that he humbled himself even through the human flesh, that he was willing to die a criminal's death on a cross, though he had done nothing wrong. Therefore, God elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. This morning, as we think about the power of his name, I want you to think about the name Jesus. The name Jesus is above all other names. That when I think about who God is, when I think about what God does, when I think about what he has done in and through my life, the personification of everything God is and who he will be and who he always has been is seen in the personhood of Jesus. Later on, we're going to talk about Christ. But I want you to know that his name is not Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. If you was to go in those days, they would take his father and it would be uh, Jesus bar Joseph. The, the idea that that's where he comes from or Jesus, the Nazarene, the, where he comes from, Nazareth. We, we understand that there's all ways of looking at it. But Jesus Christ, Christ is not his last name. As a matter of fact, and, and we'll talk about this later. When you look at the New Testament, you see in, in the Gospels and, and, and even in Acts, you see Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. But once you see the resurrection and Jesus has gone on up into heaven and you see later on, it becomes Christ Jesus. There's a switch. See, the name of Jesus is important. And if there's one name that you hold on to and the power of his name is the name Jesus. The Bible says, therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name that is above all other names is the name of Jesus. So as I'm studying and I'm looking and I'm saying, what, what do we want to present in this opening message? There's so many things that shows the power of the name of Jesus. And, and as I looked, I almost threw in another set of verses and was going to make the sermon like 50 minutes long. And I said, I know everybody would be happy with that, but I'll keep it shorter and I won't throw on all those verses in Acts chapter 4. It's a great chapter. I encourage you to read it. Uh, not now, but later on. And I look to me instead, and we go to the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 8. I want to think about what power we have in a name. The name that we claim matters. The Bible reads in Acts, chapter 19, verse 8, Then Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some became stubborn, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So as we look at it for us today, we would call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. We see ourselves as Christians. And this day they, they started being known as the way and the way is coming from Jesus. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Who? Jesus. 
It is the name above all names. And oftentimes we hear it said in a condescending way. We hear it in a flippant way. We say it in a way that has nothing to do with who he is to us. It's just a name we throw out. Paul's preaching. And in this preaching, they're rejecting him. They're, they're looking. They're saying, no, I don't, I don't see it that way. They become stubborn. So Paul left the synagogue in verse uh, 9, verse B, uh, the last part of that. So Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him. Then he held daily discussions at the lecture hall of Tyrannus. In verse 10, this went on for the next two years. So that people throughout the province of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. They found themselves in a place where people were coming through, coming by, going back home. They were hearing the word. They were then spreading it to other people. They were knowing who this Jesus was. And in this, God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. This is important. We see it even in our world today. We wonder, is God a God of miracles? I 100% believe God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That who God was before is the God who he is today as he will be the God tomorrow. And in this, we see these, these unusual miracles that are being performed by Paul. In our world today, we would look at it and we start elevating the person, not the creator. So in this, we look and we see what is happening. And in verse 12, it says, when handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched Paul's skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. A group of Jews was traveling. From town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation. I want you to think about what this verse is now showing and the difference between Paul and them. Paul knows Jesus. These people are using his name. See, there's a difference in our life. For every single person sitting here knows the name Jesus. You've heard it. You're hearing it now. Maybe even if you're sitting here or you're listening to this and you go, that's the first time I've ever heard Jesus. Well, you know his name now. But the bigger question is, do you know him? This is what they were saying. I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. Whom Paul preaches. I want you to think about that. Imagine you going to prayer tonight and say, in the name of Jesus, the Jesus that Chad preached about today, that's the name I want to go by. His name, Chad's name, that Chad preached on out of Jesus. I'm praying to you in the name of Jesus whom Chad preaches about. That's who I'm going to come to. If you've been doing that, you're going to learn don't do that anymore. See, when we see other people with the knowledge of who Jesus is, and that's who Paul was. Paul was not just using the name of Jesus. He knew the name of Jesus. He not only knew the name of Jesus, he knew Jesus in his life. See, there's a difference when we pray and we know Jesus. See, I'm around people a lot that they don't go to church, they don't read their Bible, they, they don't really follow after any kind of religion, if you will. And let's just be honest about it. If you really look up the word religion, it's about a relationship. So we live in a culture now that's becoming counter-church. 
counter relationship with God. And, and they, they make the statements when light hits them that all of a sudden they see me and now they want me to pray because they believe in my Jesus, though they don't know Jesus. See, it doesn't work in our life if we know about Jesus. These people knew about Paul. And they knew that, they, that Paul was preaching about Jesus. They had heard him. They had seen all the miracles. But what happens in those days if all of a sudden I come along and say, Hey, I can pray for you. Give me $1,000 and you'll be healed. What are you going to do? These people are looking at it from a beneficial standpoint of what can I get? So I ask you the question, and I want you to ask yourself the question, do I know Jesus? It's an important question because I don't want you to answer the question, yes, I know about Jesus. I know some biblical stories about Jesus. I know the Jesus that Chad preaches about on a week in and week out basis. I know about those things, but do you know Jesus? See, Paul knew Jesus. These ones who are casting out these evil spirits, they're doing it in the name of Paul, who's using the name of Jesus. So I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus, the one that Paul's preaching about. Whoever that dude is that Paul's preaching about, that's what I want to use. And the Bible goes on in verse 14. Seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, we're doing this. But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus. I know Paul. But who are you? They were not even known by the evil spirit. Now that doesn't sound like much to us, but I ask you the question, and I want you to ask yourself the question, am I known? When you think about the life of faith that you live out every day, are you known? Does Jesus Christ know who you are? Not just as, a, as an overarching, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, he's omniscient, meaning he knows everything, he's all powerful, and he's everywhere. Yeah, we get that, he knows, but have you accepted him into a personal relationship? This deal that says, wait a minute, I am known, I am known by my Father in heaven. When you are known by your Father in heaven, Trust me, you will be known by the evil spirits of the dark world that we do not see. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the prince of the powers of the dark world and which lives around us all the time. Am I known? See, the evil spirit looked and said, I know Jesus. I know Paul. I don't know you. The Bible goes on and says, then the, the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. They had already been going around to evil spirits using the name of Paul, who is using the name of Jesus. I'm preaching in the word of Jesus that Paul is using. This is what they're doing. And they're casting out evil spirits. They're getting money. They're doing this stuff. They're becoming, hey, I don't have to know Jesus. I just have to know about Jesus. And I know about him until you meet up with the right evil spirit. Dudes left out naked and battered, torn to pieces. I mean, imagine. For us today, we struggle in the American culture to believe whether or not there's evil spirits or not, and we could spend hours talking about it. 
hey, the Bible tells me that there's a heaven and there's a hell. I believe it. So for me, there's no question when I look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God. Boom. There's no discussion if he exists or not. It's just telling you he does. Let's move on with it. So I believe that Jesus spoke about hell just about as much as he did anything else, if not more. So I look at it and I understand that there are circumstances and situations that this life is going to throw our way. That we could kind of subside in the same scenario of this evil. So I ask the question, do I know Jesus? What do circumstances say to your faith in the name of Jesus in whom you proclaim? See, the circumstances of our life are going to come and hit us. And we can look and say, I believe in the name of Jesus. And you can know about him. You could have gone to vacation Bible school all your life. You could have gone to children's church, to youth, to church and continue and to grow. You could go to Bible study after Bible study and have all kinds of knowledge. But if you've never really accepted the name of Jesus, that it is above everything else, there's no trophy that can take its place. There's no amount of money that can ever usurp his authority. There's no strength within us that can ever change his divine nature of who he is and who he's going to be. There is nothing that can change God. And yet for us, whether we call it an evil spirit or a circumstance of life, it still wants to beat you up. It wants to destroy you. And it's going to keep coming at you. And this circumstance is going to ask you the question, I know Jesus. I know Paul. I know the Lord that Chad serves. But none of that's going to do you any good if you don't know Jesus. See? Arthur Golden said this, Adversity is like a strong wind. It tears us away, tears away from us all but the things that cannot be torn so that we see ourselves as we truly are. When the evil spirit, when the circumstance of life hits you, in whom you serve, in whom you say the name that is above all names. It's not just head knowledge, it's heart knowledge. I know who Jesus is, and because I know him, I serve him. And because I serve him, I follow him. And wherever he leads, I will follow. And no matter what happens to me, when the circumstances come and try to strip me naked and batter me and bruise me, I say in the name of Jesus. Get behind me. Why? Because that's the God I serve. It's not just the name out there. See, the Bible goes on and says the story of what happened spread quickly. All through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. I mean, think about it. Do I know Jesus? This story spread like that. I mean, it was like Instagram and Twitter was on high-speed alert. Snapchat was going crazy. For y'all that don't know the Bible as well, there is no Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook in the Bible. That was me giving a little bit of, you know, extra just to make it current today. Which story is being told of you and your faith? See, it spreads when the circumstance of life hits. The evil spirit comes your way. It doesn't take long for people are watching you. To see how are you going to handle it? How are you going to live it out? What's the truth in you now? Do you really believe in this Jesus? Or are you going to fall down crumbled on the ground? Lying down, face down, and, and, and almost to the point of in a fetal position because the circumstances of life have come your way. And they say, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but I don't know you, and I don't care about you. But when you know. 
know Jesus, you stand strong on the power of his name, not because it's something you know about, because you know him. Do I know Jesus? The Bible says a solemn fear descended on the city. And the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. When we know who Jesus is, it changes who we are. It changes what we go after. It changes our lives that we say, I don't go after things for me. The story of my life is not for others to see me elevated, but to see him elevated. Because Philippians chapter 2 tells us he has been elevated above all other names, above all other people. The name of Jesus. Ask yourself the question, what do I need to leave at the feet of Jesus today? The things you're striving after in life, will they have an eternal value? The things you strive and hold on to that you hold as the most value. Will in the end, when the circumstances of life start stripping away at that, will it matter? See, ultimately, we all want to be happy. We all want to be wealthy. We all want to be healthy. We want all that go well. But in the end, circumstances, evil, call it what you want, is going to come after you. And I promise you, you cannot beat them up. You can't. They will beat you to a pulp. But when you stand on the power of the name of Jesus, the name that is above all other names. When you make him your personal savior, your personal Lord, your personal Christ, your personal whoever that you want to call him. When you call him Jesus, do you know who he is? Do you know him personally? The Bible says when they heard the stories they brought millions of dollars worth of stuff that they saw no more as value and they burnt it. What is it today that you're holding on to? What circumstance of your life has got you bound up and in chains and in bondage and beating you up over and over and over again? You can't stop worrying. You can't stop being anxious about it. You can't stop Every day thinking about it, it just happens over and over and over again. And the circumstances looking to you and saying, I know Jesus. Can you go back? Yes. And I know him too. Because he's my God. He's my Savior. My faith is demonstrated when the circumstances and the evil of this life start stripping away all the things of this earth that don't matter. And in this very moment for you today, is there something you have not truly given over to Jesus? As we prepare, prepare for this song, and we all stand, I read to you what was written in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, as my prayer this morning. He writes, after I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. 
They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar. I want you to say the word shouting. shouting. Have you ever heard of a wall around Jericho that the men and the army had to walk around and then they walked around it the next day and they walked around it the next day and they did this and on the seventh day they walked around it seven times and the Bible tells us that they looked up to the heavens and with a great shout the walls came tumbling down I'm here to tell you that whether you're willing to do it in a church service here as General Baptists, as Christians, or you go home into your own closet and you look up to the heavens and you shout and you go, Yes, Lord! Those walls can come crumbling down. Why? Not because of my shout, but the one in whom I'm shouting to. And the Bible tells us this great people were shouting with a great war, a, a great roar. Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshiped God. And they sang. Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. I don't know what evil spirit is coming after you. I don't know what circumstance is hitting you. But don't give them the name that Paul gives. Don't give them the name Chad gives. Give them your name. The name that you stand on. The God in whom you believe. I serve Jesus. In circumstance, you won't strip me down naked and beat me up. Because my God is bigger than you. So as we sing this song, may we join in with the angels of heaven. And sing a praise to him, the one in whom saves our life. In whatever circumstance or situation you are facing today, bring it to the feet of Jesus. The Jesus in whom you serve. And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life, let me tell you something. I don't care how old or how young you are. Don't allow Satan to stop you because you're afraid of what somebody's going to think. Well, I've been going to that church longer than the preacher's been alive, and I've never accepted Jesus. I would never go down and tell anybody. Let me tell you something. 48 years, 98 years, 300 years on this earth ain't nothing compared to eternity. Don't allow Satan to rob you of this moment to say, I fall before you, God. I give you these things. I give it all to you. I trust you, God.